In this video, I want to show you a small gimmick with a pretty common markup language. So take a look at this. This is a small web application where you as the user can view other country flags and translate hello world in different languages. You can specify, scroll and select what world country you might be from, and then you can see, hey, it changes flags that you could translate to in any other place you might like. There are tons of different options as to what country you might choose and where you might be able to translate and view the flag. But this is is ultimately a capture the flag challenge. It's a small exercise, task, and activity to test you on some cybersecurity skills. And this challenge comes from LACTF, or a capture the flag competition hosted by the University of California in Los Angeles, and the challenge and competition is over. The CTF has ended, and I'll be showcasing this as a small, simple write-up for that challenge. If I zoom out here just a bit and go take a look at the challenges, we can scroll down to this web application challenge called Flag. Flag Lang. Now there isn't much to the prompt here, it says simply, do you speak the language of the flags? We have a link or URL to the challenge and a downloadable file. Obviously the gimmick and the joke of viewing country flags is to view a capture the flag challenge flag. Now I can go ahead and simply download the challenge file here, just the .zip file, and I'll go ahead and open up a command line. I am inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine, so I'll move into a directory that I have already created called Flag Lang, and I'll move from my downloads that flag laglang.zip that we just downloaded. I'll go ahead and unzip that file so we can work with everything that's provided here. And there's a lot of sweet stuff. So I'm gonna open this up in my text editor. I am using Sublime Text. So I'll open the whole current directory and now we can dig into some of the interesting files. Looks like I had one cached here, but I think we could go ahead and start with simply the Docker file. This is pretty simple. There's not much to it. We are gonna be using a Node instance. So likely server-side JavaScript and Express Framework. We've got an application directory, package package.json that defines our dependencies and the source code of our application and the command ultimately to run that web server. First things first, we could go take a look at package.json to see the source code of this application. Looks like it will just be running index.js as the server. Couple dependencies here, cookie parser express and yaml. Ooh, that one's a little bit interesting. With that, we can expand the source code and let's move into this app.js. This pulls in a couple libraries or modules that it will require and then actually grabs a YAML path, where it's joining the current directory and the countries.yaml file. We'll dig into that in just a second as it reads through it and then define some other convenience functions to be able to look up information from the countries that it must have pulled in from that YAML configuration file. Looks like it will define a secret, which is server-side information that we will not know as the player of the CTF challenge here, but it looks like it will also parse cookies based off of that secret. We have some assets that we could serve from the server and a couple different functions that define really the functionality of the application. Looks like there's an endpoint to switch with a couple HTTP get parameters or query variables like two that we might be able to switch to a different flag as you saw as we were playing with the application here. Scrolling down, we also have a view function which likely allows us to view some of the flags that we were digging into and the forward slash or just the root of the web page, the default index that we load here, will just send the template file replacing some of the information that's pertinent to the state of the application. With that, we could go take a look at that template, and this is just the HTML, or the hypertext markup language that would define the structure of the web page. You can see all these sort of dollar sign variables and values, things that might be passed in to include some templated data, hey, given from the application server. But this is pretty simple, this is all static. We could see some client-side code defined in assets here, that are, is our flag.js file, which gives some dynamic capability like filling out all of the options for flags that could be read from that YAML configuration file and anything that we might interact with like, hey, buttons, select dropdowns, etc, etc. Now, all of this is alluding to that countries.yaml file, and this is just yet another markup language or YAML. Again, markup language you might be familiar with alongside JSON, Toml, and others, but YAML has a couple interesting idiosyncrasies and some peculiar gimmicks. Ultimately, I'm assuming our goal goal is to read something from Flagistan, and that's a fake country that's not real, right? There's, there is no country in the world called Flagistan, as far as I know, but it has a code here, FL, a message that's presumably the flag, just redacted, a password that would have been necessary, and an interesting deny list. 
seemingly including all of the other country codes that I guess we aren't able to read things from. It's kind of odd, but look, let's go try in the application, just viewing in our web browser, to see if we could just view or see the flag from Flagistan. Let me go ahead and toggle this. I am from the United States personally, so I'll set that as where I am from, and I'll change this to just go to Flagistan. Looks like that's at the very top here, but it says Flagistan has an embargo in your country. So I am not able to see that. Uh, any other country, like, hey, Turkey or whatever, also, if I tried to visit Flagistan, will tell me that has an embargo, and I'm not able to view that country's flag and translation and message. We could probably put two and two together here, thinking that this deny list is what's gonna tell us whether or not there is an embargo and we're able to see that data or not. And again, we could see that, view it just in the source code and logic from our app.js. We could actually see, hey, this definition here, if the country deny list includes the other ISO that we're working with, then it'll just return that message, there is an embargo there. Obviously, in inside of the countries.yaml file, this has the definition for all of those countries that we could interact with. Hey, it'll include its ISO code, the message, and all these options, and their own deny list, which is empty for just about all of these. So the question remains now, how could we read the information from Flagistan and obtain the flag or the secret, the key, the token that proves and validates that we have solved this challenge? That's the gimmick here. So we will answer that question in just a second, but before before we do, look, I try my best with these videos, and the only reason that I'm able to put out as much content as frequently as I do alongside my day job and everything else I do in my life is because, thankfully, I have sponsorship. I really hope you're understanding of that, but please, if I may, I'd love to tell you about Sneak. If you've been prioritizing secure code for a while now, then you probably already know about Sneak, but if you're not familiar, listen up. Sneak is your best friend for secure software development. It integrates into your existing workflows, like inside your IDE, or even your CI CD pipelines, and so much more, all to help you find and fix vulnerabilities. And honestly, Sneak is awesome at this. They've been recognized as an industry leader by Gartner, Forrester, and Fortune, and they're trusted by developers all over the industry, at AWS, Google, Salesforce, Atlassian, and so many more. Their team is always putting out incredible research, like even the recent Leaky Vessels vulnerability. So here's the gist. No one should be deploying code that hasn't had a security check. So make sure your code is secure before you deploy out your applications and projects with Sneak. You can use my link below in the video description, jh.live slash sneak, and get started to develop fast and stay secure with Sneak. Now let's get back to that YAML configuration file. And again, there are so many different countries listed here, but we might be able to find something odd, something that sticks out, something that stands out maybe like a sore thumb. I don't know. It's really just a test of your eyes here, but thankfully syntax highlighting in a lot of common IDEs or smart text editors can help clue you in on this. And I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling and eventually I want to hit one that is a little bit interesting. If I finally move down into these letters here and we reach N, we'll get into the country Norway. And I don't know if you can see it, but take a look. Norway has an ISO value and a code set as NO or NO, and that is in purple when everything else is yellow. So you might be already tracking what I'm digging into here. Let me show you a quick example here. Let's say I were to create a new file just as a playground to showcase this. I'll set the syntax to YAML so we have that syntax highlighting here, and I'll just define maybe an object for the galaxy or our world or our universe, whatever. And that could have maybe a planet, and we can call that planet just Earth, right? That's fine. I don't know, capitalize Earth, and then we could say the sky is blue as one of these attributes or properties here, and I would just simply say, yes, it is true. That is a value that I might like. We could say, oh, here's a population or whatever, we'll add in some numbers, I don't know, whatever the heck it might happen to be. We could say the species is human, I don't know if there were aliens and some other planets or something we could have some fun with here, but look at how all of these are either yellow or purple. Now, that purple one has a little bit of a gimmick here because the sky is blue. I set that to a Boolean value. Now, normally when I supply a string like human or earth as the name here, I could wrap this in double quotes or single quotes to have YAML denote this is a string value, but it'll automatically figure out, look, that's probably a string value. 
Now, when I enter the word true, that is a Boolean value that isn't really going to be triggered as a string because it's smart enough to say, oh, you mean true as a zero or one Boolean value. And thankfully, YAML makes us a little bit nicer because you could just enter even the word yes as the value for our sky is blue as a Boolean value. Now, you're probably following down this road here, here, because I could say false if I didn't want to say, I don't know, the sky's like green or whatever. Now, if yes is a Boolean one, we also have no as a Boolean false or zero. Look a little familiar? That is the gimmick here. If I actually move back to our countries.yaml file, we'll notice that Norway is the country with that code of no, or N-O as the letters, not as a string, but as a Boolean value. So if I actually move back up here to check out Flagistan, in the deny list, if I were to cruise through all of these values, we could go find our string no, and that as being the country code for Norway, but again, that is now wrapped in those double quotes, and it's clear that's meant to be interpreted as a string. However, down below, later on in the declaration of all this configuration info, no is provided not as a string, but as interpreted as a Boolean value. So this clues us in as to how we might be able to take advantage of this. Say that I, not coming from my usual, hey, home country of the United States, again, remember, we would not be able to view Flagistan as the country that we'd like to see with that flag value. It has an embargo, but Norway is the one special unique country because of this tiny little oversight. If I actually navigate, hey, go use Norway as our option here, we'll select that, we'll get the flag and how we might say it, but oops, looks like something's a little bit broken. If I now try to go to Flagistan, that NO value is being treated as a Boolean false and it is not in the deny list. So Flagistan will give me the pure flag, LACTF. Here's the full flag, Norwegian YAML fans in shambles. <laughs> and that's it. That's the solution. We could go copy and paste this. I'll right click and go put that on the scoreboard. So I would go ahead and submit that and we're looking good, but the CTF is over, right? And still, I really like that little trick. I think that's kind of a neat little gimmick to harp on, and I'm digging the comment here. Hey, I love chat GPT translation. Maybe they just use some AI, generative, whatever, LLM crap to spit that all out, and they didn't even realize that NO gimmick is now going to be ending up uh, evaluated as a Boolean value, false, and not considered a string as defined in the deny list. I like that. I thought that was kind of neat and cutesy. And by the way, we saw in a lot of the code that this is actually kind of handled and interpreted with those cookies, right? We were able to extract that with the secret given, and it checks this with a bunch of the cookies that are provided here and how the code and application works. But if I were to get back to my web browser and I'll hit F12 on my keyboard, do some sweet Missouri hacking, I'll move into the developer tools, browser stuff here, and I could go into application as the tab, scroll over to the cookies section for storage here, and we have a couple cookies. If I were to delete these, if I were to start with a blank canvas, completely fresh, clean slate. I'll refresh this page here. I'll close out of the developer tools, hit F5 on my keyboard. This brings us right to the flat instance of the page. But before I've actually toggled or set where I'm from and the view section here for the flag I'd like to you know, start with, if I were to just immediately switch into Flagistan, it won't know where I came from to begin with and we could just kind of cheese the challenge right away. Uh, it'll just spit out the flag and you could avoid, hey, finding that YAML flaw or gimmick. But again, I think that's some pretty cool knowledge for our own learning and education. With all that said, I hope you're a little bit smarter on YAML, the yet another markup language, and one of those small little gimmicks and peculiar idiosyncrasies on true or false Boolean values, yes or no. And when you want it to be acting as a string, but it's not, and it's another value that might trip you up in some code and application. And hey, you do wanna make sure that your code is secure, so again, seriously, please do give some love to our sponsor, Sneak, link in the video description. You should seriously be using it if you write any code, especially for your job in like DevOps, DevSec, all that stuff. Sneak has got to be in the mix. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.